On a Mac, the easiest way to install software is through a utility called Brew. Brew, or Homebrew, is a package manager for the Mac. Folks have defined packages for most of the more common tools and applications that you're likely to ever need on a Mac. And that includes more behind the scenes tools like Curl or Git or Gatsby or the Fish Shell, and friendlier applications like VS Code or 1Password or Chrome. You can even use it to install most fonts and everything on the Mac App Store. In this video, I'll show you how to get started with Brew and what it's actually doing and how I use it on a daily basis. You're watching another video from The Techno Evangelist. On this channel, I talk about the tools and technologies that I use to get my job done. If you find topics like this interesting, consider subscribing. Oh, and hit that like button to let me know I'm doing something that you appreciate. So let's get started by finding it on the web. Go to brew.sh in your web browser. You should see a page that looks something like this. Now to install it, just copy this command from that page into the terminal on your Mac. The easiest way to start the terminal is just to press command space and then type terminal and then press enter. When that's all done, you can start using brew to install cool tools. Let's say that you started using bitbar to have a custom widget in your menu bar or maybe Better Touch Tool to customize your touch bar, or maybe even Ubersect or Geek Tool to customize your desktop. And you want a simple weather widget to show up. Now, sure, there are plenty of weather widgets that you can put in all of these places, but you want to do something super custom. So there are a number of weather APIs out there, many of which have a free plan. Open Weather Map is one of them, but whatever you choose, you're probably going to have to work with a JSON document because that's what most APIs are going to put out. So how do you start to work with JSON? And how do you do that on the command line? Well, there are three common ways that people use to work with uh, HTTP calls that result in a JSON document. You can use curl, which is super powerful, but a bit painful to use if you don't use it every day, though it is probably already installed on your system. There's wget, which I feel is a little bit more friendly, but you probably need to install it somehow. And then there's the prettiest, which is HTTPy, which you'll definitely need to install, but it makes working with this stuff much is easier and, well, prettier. Let's start with curl. So run curl. Hmm. Not useful. Try curl dash dash help. <laughs> Perhaps even less useful. Try using the man pages that are built into most Unix oriented systems. Type man curl. Great. Now I see how every command line option can be used but I still don't really know how to perform the API call. Thankfully, there are a number of man alternatives, one of the best of which, in my opinion, is TLDR. Well, since this video is actually about brew, let's install it using brew. Usually, you can guess the right command to use, brew install, and then whatever you want to install. So brew install TLDR. Within a few seconds, it's installed and ready to go. TLDR curl. Cool, now I have a bunch of examples of ways to use curl. Turns out I can just run curl followed by the URL, and I should get back the JSON, assuming the API method is a get. For this video, rather than dealing with API keys, I'm going to use an example API that you can find at dummy.restapiexample.com. So if I type curl followed by the URL for the list of employees at this dummy API site, I get this jumble of data. Hmm, not super useful. You could copy this and paste it into something like VS Code, but it may be easier to process it with another tool. JQ is a great little utility to work with JSON. So let's run brew install JQ to install it, then TLDR JQ to figure out how to use it. Now run that last curl command and pipe the output to JQ. Wow, that is a lot prettier. Now, if that's all we need to do, using a tool like HTTPy might be easier. Run brew install httpy, then httpy followed by that URL. You'll see that we have similar output, but also a pretty output of all the HTTP headers. But we don't need just the JSON. We'll need a single data point out of the JSON that we can then use. If we just want the status, we could use dot status. If we want all the items in the data, we could say dot data or dot data, then open and close square brackets. If we want all the employee names, we could use dot data brackets dot employee underscore name. Or if we want one specific name, we could add the index to the array. Now, the hardest thing here is learning how to filter JSON, 
but you can read the do actual docs to get good at that. Now, there is a problem with one of the first commands we ran. Using brew is not always the best way to install something. Try out the command tldr dash dash version. It says version 1.30 with the date of 2016. But if you look at the TLDR website, you'll see that the most mature client is the Node.js client. And that was last updated a couple months ago. Every now and then you'll run into software that installs an older version when you use brew. And unfortunately there isn't a really good way to tell which is good versus bad. For instance, installing Docker via brew will get you a much older version. But most things installed via brew are great and you get the latest versions with no real effort. So I'll remove TLDR using brew uninstall TLDR, then install it the right way using npm i or install dash g for global TLDR. So not only is brew super easy to install apps, it's also super easy to uninstall apps. I mentioned that you can also install other tools with brew. We spent some time playing around with APIs at the command line. One of the best tools to use to play around with more complex APIs in a GUI is called Postman. And we can install it using brew cask. Now, a few years ago, you had to install cask after brew, but now it comes just built in. Type brew cask install Postman, and within a few seconds, you, you can start playing around with Postman. It's just as easy to install VS Code or Google Chrome or OmniFocus or ScreenFlow. Of course, if you're installing products like OmniFocus or ScreenFlow, you better have a license. Brew won't help you get around staying legal. I also like to install different fonts, and Brew is perfect for installing them. But first, we have to add a tap, which is an alternate source of formula for Brew. So run Brew tap homebrew slash cask fonts, then Brew cask install and whatever font you want to install. JetBrains just released a great new font called JetBrains Mono. So to install it on my system, I can run brew cask install jetbrains mono. Now you might look at all of this and think, well, it's not that hard to download and install all of this the normal way, but it gets a lot more interesting when you script it all. Let's say you're using a MacBook Pro at work and they just updated you to a new machine. You could run a single script with all the tools that you use and within a few minutes, all your tools are installed. You don't have to go to search around the web and install everything individually. Great, except maybe you have a bunch of apps that are installed from the Mac App Store. Well, if you run brew install maz and then run maz list, you'll see all the apps you've installed from the App Store and can add those lines to your script. Okay, that's a little bit of a pain. Generating that file and then keeping it up to date can be time consuming. So type brew bundle dump and your script will be generated for you based on what is currently installed. Now copy that script over to your new machine install brew, and then run brew bundle to have everything installed for you. Now that's pure magic and saves a whole heap of time. But what is brew doing? Well, each brew formula is simply a Ruby file that defines some metadata about the package, defines dependencies and conflicts, and then runs each of the steps you would have to run normally. There is no magic. It just automates the steps. What are some things that I do with it? Well, recently I installed a tool for dealing with multiple Kubernetes contacts called KubeContext and immediately put it to use as I sometimes find myself jumping back and forth from a local rancher cluster to Minikube to a cluster on AWS. When I needed Minikube, I installed it with Brew. I needed Telnet to get onto one of my file hubs that for some reason doesn't support SSH. And there are so many other tools that I try really quickly and then remove right away. I think Brew is one of those amazing tools that everyone should be familiar with if you're using a Mac. My name is Matt Williams and I am the Techno Evangelist. Please consider subscribing if you find topics like this interesting. And I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.